Tonight, inside a more than 30 hour long Sheridan standoff. Just unbelievable how trigger happy people are with other human beings. As the community honors Sergeant Nevada Crinky, so do his brothers in blue. It's just devastating because he was such a such a great guy. This as his family and friends try to cope with the unimaginable. Yeah, he was a great guy. Um, always wanting to serve. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. The suspect in the shooting death of a Sheridan police officer is now dead tonight. That standoff, which lasted around 30 hours, finally came to an end around 5.30 this evening when 46-year-old William Lowry attempted to flee the home with a weapon. That's when, according to the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation, police fired shots, ultimately killing him at the scene. Law enforcement agencies used several tactics, including water cannons, gas grenades, even an excavator to tear apart the house in order to get him out. Lowry is accused of killing Sheridan Police Sergeant Nevada Crinky as the officer delivered a trespassing warning. A standoff, while well now over, made for a long night and some very tense moments for neighbors in that area. Because people want to go back home and it's cold and go into their house. Yeah. A lot of people had to evacuate yesterday. It's just this is like not a, what we grew up around. Safe town, yeah. you know. This is something a town where you look out for each other and this is just so out of the normal. It's crazy. Yeah. It's unclear why Lowry chose this particular house to hide in or if he knew the homeowners. He did have a lengthy criminal record, including several domestic violence and DUI convictions. We are learning more tonight about Sergeant Nevada Crinky, who lost his life yesterday. He'd been a member of the Sheridan Police Department for about six and a half years. And friends and family we talked to all say he long had a desire to serve his country and serve others. Outside the Sheridan Police Department, a growing memorial for a fallen officer killed in the line of duty. But it's not just here in Sheridan where people are feeling the pain of this senseless loss. He loved his family, but um, he loved his job. Sergeant Nevada Crinky was a 2009 graduate of Bozeman High School. We talked to several of his friends who remember him well. He was just a nice guy. He, he knew when to be funny. He knew when you know to be serious. It's devastating because he was such a such a great guy in high school and included everybody and just a super nice stand-up guy that you could count on and friends and family we talked to say sergeant crinky had a desire to serve and help others for as long as they can remember he'd always talk about how his goal is to join the army and join the military so you kind of knew that career path was something he was always going to be striving towards and he joined the army following high school where part of his job was to protect children walking to and from school in afghanistan and after that came back to bozeman to figure out what he wanted to do and he uh he wanted to be a police officer all he wanted to do was serve and and uh, help people Nevada joined the Sheridan Police Department in 2017, was promoted a corporal in 2018, became a sergeant in the spring of 2022. His half-brother Jeremy says when he wasn't working to help people, he loved playing video games, being a shooting instructor for fellow officers and his dogs. He loved his dogs. Um, he had several dogs, and then plus his wife, is, she was on the force, so she had a couple dogs, plus the canine. So, so they looked other dogs. Nevada leaves behind his wife Carla, who also works for the Sheridan Police Department, their baby girl, and a lot of family and friends. I think him having a servant's heart as well, like he wanted to serve his country and then serving the general population when he got out of the military as well. A man who always wanted to serve and gave it all doing just that. Wyoming Governor Mark Gordon has ordered both U.S. and Wyoming flags to be lowered to half staff at the state capitol and in Sheridan County in memory of Crinky. Flags will be returned to full staff at sunset on the day his body is laid to rest. Funeral arrangements have not been announced at this point. We'll continue to follow this developing story out of Sheridan. You can find all of our comprehensive coverage right now on KTVQ.com. Now to the weather scene where Billings already has a fresh coat of snow on the ground and 
Now there's more to come, perhaps heavier than the first round. With the very latest on this system, here's Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Ed? What do you say we take a little trip around the state? Our viewers, folks over in Miles City, good evening. I hope you're doing great. You see a little bit of light snow here in the street lamps as we take a look around with temperatures only at 19 degrees. Fortunately, there isn't a whole lot of wind in the mix. We're going to move over to the state capitol building in Helena. 18 degrees there, but we do have some light snow. It will continue to see that develop as we get through the evening and overnight hours of tonight. The Belgrade Airport just outside of Bozeman, where we're now at 19 degrees, but the snow showers are at least just a little bit of a mist there. You can see the visibility is down just a bit. Uh, same sort of situation as we start looking over towards Great Falls. Only 12 degrees in the electric city with a calm wind there, but the humidity up to 95%. Little trip over to Missoula now at 25 degrees, but we're seeing some snowflakes starting to develop there. The weather system could cause some travel problems. And here in Billings, where the temperatures move down to 18, the forecast is coming up. The Super Bowl celebration parade for the Kansas City Chiefs turned into a nightmare with at least one person killed and at least 30 others injured, including nine kids with gunshot wounds. The extent of those injuries are not yet known, but law enforcement does say that three people are in custody. One of the gunmen is believed to have been tackled by the crowd. The shots rang out after the Chiefs' victory parade, an event that had around one million people in attendance. The FBI is on the scene and the president has been briefed. Law enforcement believes the situation began with an argument. and There's no evidence that this was an act of terrorism. Governor Greg Gianforte ordered the Montana National Guard to identify resources to be used to assist Texas with border security. That move follows a new report saying cartels are targeting Montana reservations with fentanyl and meth. Montana National Guard leadership can now work with Texas to identify ways that the state can support, such as identifying volunteers. Texas Governor Greg Abbott requested other states to help address migrants crossing the border illegally. The Rocky Mountain Drug Task Force says 3 million fentanyl pills were seized in that region last year. Today in Helena, the Property Tax Task Force officially began its work. Governor Gianforte launched that task force to look at ideas for long-term property tax reform. Leaders say that the property tax system is going to be a complex issue to tackle, but they're ready to take it on. Task force members spent the meeting talking about a number of problems, including changes in the state's tax base to the need for more transparency in the system. Over the coming months, they'll break into subcommittees to start talking about how to address them. We have a lot of great minds around the table, a lot of great folks that are really concerned about this and are going to dig in. And so I'm extremely optimistic that we will find some solutions that will um, at least help solve long term. Gianforte told the task force that their recommendations must not include a statewide sales tax. The goal is to have a report together by August. On this Valentine's Day, thousands of workers, including some right here in Billings, say they are not feeling the love. Rideshare drivers went on strike across the country, demanding higher wages and better safety features. Rallies were held for Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash drivers at 10 major airports across the country. While no formal protest was set up in the Magic City, drivers here are keeping a close eye on the situation. If I made 250, I was happy, but I mean, 200 was decent. And honestly, lately since Christmas, I'm lucky if I can even break 100. And I used to only put in eight hours a day. Now I'm having to put 10 and 12 hour days in just to get, you know, I don't, I'm not making what I used to. The Justice for App Workers Coalition is leading the fight. They represent more than 130,000 drivers and delivery workers across the nation. A Yogo Sapphire like this is extremely rare, but a master goldsmith like Shane Berkman is even harder to find these days. The Billings native of Berkman Custom Jewelry is a diamond in the rough in an industry where many are retiring. After a jewelry class at Skyview High, it was crystal clear what Shane Berkman wanted to do with his life. After all these years, now I'm a master goldsmith, so I can pretty much do anything. It's what makes him such a rare gem in the Magic City. I had to really concentrate. Like many other trades, master goldsmiths are far and few in between. There's not very many of us. I'm kind of surprised there's not more of 
people wanting to learn this trade because it's such a wonderful trade. That title means he can design and make just about anything. You can actually see the dirt coming off. And with 35 years of experience, you won't find two of any piece at Berkman's Custom Jewelry. That one. Nor is anything mass produced. It's not imported. They're not machine set. These are all set by these two hands. When it comes to Shane's work, no stone is left unturned. He's a great designer. He's a perfectionist. He does not let things go out the door unless it's right. It's why longtime customer Michelle Berger decided to work for him. He's been making her jewelry since he was just 19. I think we're pretty good on yoga. But it's not just his work that makes him shine bright. I like the feeling here. I've been to a couple other stores recently and uh, one I felt real hurried in. It was by chance that Billings native Linda Bofto came into Berkman's months ago, but it was fate when Shane asked to polish one of her rings. Shane was the one, he was kind of an intern uh, with this gentleman, and, and he's the one that did the ring. So that was over 30 years ago. I've loved the ring. It's unusual. There's not another one like it. It's what makes Shane's business so different than most others. I would like to see more handmade custom pieces, but I don't think I'll see that. It's going to be more mass produced. So I guess that just makes me more special. <laughs> In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, showing the love. One small town florist helping to bring people together on this Valentine's Day. We're going to take you there. And then later in sports, all in the music. One Wyoming sports star is now making news for his talents off the field. We'll show you just a bit.